So CJ, funny, you know, last night I texted you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because Rebecca was uh, talking about like her and Lindsay's bond are real freaking tight. They're they're super tight. Yeah. And Lindsay said something weeks ago to her about comparing their friendship with another some famous people's friendship and, mm. and she, Rebecca was like I wonder which one I am I have to be this one and all she wrote was I'm so and so right <laughs> and I said is she gonna get that and I said mm. hell she said hell yeah she will and she wrote back it said absolutely you are mm. and I said damn I said um yeah I, I I don't I don't know besides for you I don't know if anybody could you know pick it up that quickly what I'm talking about I said <laughs> CJ probably could and then like five minutes later um something reminded me about the uh, clicker clackers you know in yeah. the spokes and and she goes oh yeah the clicker clackers you buy them they're made of plastic i said buy them she says yeah you, they're little plastic things you could put on your forks and it makes the wheels sound like Brrr. i says buy them <laughs> really people made yeah. those mm -mm. and i said we used we used playing cards or baseball cards and clothespins yeah yeah and she goes really i said yeah i said hold on CJ, I'll, what I was did asleep. you use for clicker clackers? <laughs> Were you sorry? I was what did you use for clicker clackers in your yeah. spokes? Yeah. And I kept it just like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so when I told her, I said, yep, look at what he said. <laughs> Playing cards or baseball cards? <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's That's funny. Yeah, we'll be actually talking about friendship tonight. This is going to be good for the squad. A yeah. lot of the stuff they've heard my opinion on before, but. Not all of it. All right, squad. We're going to talk a bit about something that, um, you know, Mac has said a lot to us, as he just mentioned, uh, on some of these topics. But I also want some of this to be used publicly after the fact. And I hope it also, again, inspires people to jump on board with the squad to take this thing to the next level. I think community is going to be so important. We're going to be talking about friendships here, in, including what we're discussing. But in light of that, I think people are clamoring for community, especially <clears throat> of like-minded people. Because if you're a freedom-loving person, but you're stuck out in downtown Portland, <laughs> you, know, you might really, really like a community like the squad, simply because right. you can find people, and not just to have those relationships, but also, again, as a resource because the skill set is so diverse and so deep and uh, a tremendous enhancement. Um, and this is not to minimize any other aspect of the squad, but the community aspect is central, even though we title it Pat Mack, Keep the Blaze Alive Coaching Squad, and he is obviously a showcase of this. He would be the first one to tell you the community is really the lifeblood of all of this. But I'm straight. Um, tonight, we're talking about relationships, family, marriage, and then friendships, which is really haven't gotten into, mm -hmm. which I don't know how Max going to talk about this because he doesn't have any friends. That's right. <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't. I was thinking about that. So I was like, well, shit, man. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, so let's get started. Mac, what are some core values that you believe are essential for a healthy family dynamic? So I, I, I looked at this, and, and this, was, this is a quick answer, right? Only because um, it's core values, you know, core right. values. And when you think core values is a list of them, you know, you could go with like, uh, you know, the Boy Scout credo, that kind of thing, sure. you know, when you're talking about values. But three came to mind real quick, and I wrote them down real quick. Openness, honesty, trust, mm -hmm. you know, those right there. And that seems to cover a lot of ground with me, with Rebecca and the kids. I'm all three of those, and I hope that they trust me to be their provider, the protector, and to be honest with them. And But I'm very open with all of them too. You know, like uh, I keep them involved, even if it's mundane, like so they were walking through, they're not gonna ask me what I'm doing, but I told them I'm doing homework for the squad. You know, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm uh, checking out and, and Cyan will go, oh, cool, you know, but I just wanna keep them sure. uh, involved on what I am doing every day. So openness, honesty, and trust, yep. Bingo. How do you balance, Mac, the work obligations and family life? Family life. Um, so, you know, when I was especially real busy, boom, boom, boom. Um, a big one for me is uh, because I know a lot of guys who don't do this. Uh, they, they're, it, they're not uh, transparent about 
their work in its entirety. You know, they're not, it's not full disclosure. So I'm all about no surprises, full disclosure. And I want to um, uh, make sure that Rebecca, the kids know far out in advance what I've got going on. So there's no surprises. You know, my calendar's in the open, no surprises. Um, and I plan, I plan around, I plan the calendar around important dates. That's a big one. You know, when you sure. look at like, I just plan next year's calendar. You know, I, I started filling that up and you got to be cognizant of those, you know, those crucial dates, birthdays and holidays and things like that, yeah. you know, significant uh, milestone dates, even uh, that they might not be important to you, right? but they're important to others. So yeah. you got to keep those things in mind. And then the other one, and I talked about this, I think it was last week or the week before when I hosted this by myself, uh, lots of comms while on the road. Hey, yes. by the way, how are you guys doing? You know, this is what I'm doing today. You know, a, a morning check-in sometime during the day and then a, a like a dinner check-in, um, you know, send them some pictures and stuff like that. I mean, you got a right. supercomputer in your pocket. Why wouldn't you do that? You know? Sure. Uh, so those are, those are, uh, those are a few of mine right there. Yep. Right. So it, you're doing it from, an annual standpoint as far as your schedule goes mm -hmm. when you're traveling you're trying to stay yep. in contact on mm -hmm. a daily basis when things can rapidly change how are you are, are you cognizant of the need for that balance on a daily basis not on a daily basis mm -hmm. but the thing is you got to be able to ready to shift because the question here was work obligation balance work obligations and family life right you know so i mean family life's going to take precedence you know it's going to it's going to um you, you know, if there's a family not even a crisis but if there's an issue you know you've got to uh be able to pull the reins back on whatever you're doing and then be involved with the family problem because crisis is that's a no-brainer right you've got to be there everything stops uh but yeah so uh, i'm not i'm not consciously thinking about it but i'm ready to shift All right Yep, flexible at a, at a yep drop of a dime drop of a dime yep because it's happened to me a bunch yeah i bet yep can you share a pivotal family experience that significantly impacted your life um this this one was kind of kind of tough because because of it's significantly impacted you know yeah. i mean recently my, my dad passed right. and that was that had a a a major impact on my life. Uh, I mean, it wasn't a surprise. It, you know, we knew the writing was on the wall uh, and it was very sad, um, but I got to spend time with him before he passed, which was, uh, man, I was so freaking happy and to see him happy, you sure. know, in his, in his last hours uh, or his last couple of days. Um, but um, in, in addition to my dad passing, now my mom is rapidly aging. Mm. You know, she's rapidly aging now as well. So, I mean, there is sort of some significance there as far as impact goes. The the one that impacted me the most, because death in the family is a big one. You know, that's a big sure. one. That's going to impact significantly, you know, on, on your life. Um, uh, the passing of my sister when I was young, mm. that had a significant impact on my life life my mental psyche it took me a long time to get over that because i didn't didn't really understand death you know you didn't right. it's the first time i've ever had anybody taken from me like that or um and lost anyone like that so that one there w was a, like crushing to me yeah. because it was the first time that i ever felt deep deep sorrow you know like inside of my body in my heart in my head deep sorrow but yeah, those, those are always bummers. Uh, thankfully, we know it's that dying is a part of life, right. and our parents, our grandparents, they do get old. Uh, so, with my dad, it was it was it was good in that it wasn't a surprise. It wasn't sudden, you know. It wasn't catastrophic. It wasn't, you know, some um, you know pivotal 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 moment that happened all of the sudden. I mean, it crept up, and you know, we kind of knew that. It was going to happen sooner than later. Yeah. Mm. What's your advice for maintaining close relationships with extended family 
or how do <laughs> you handle extended that and I, I I actually was just the question mark was originally at the end of relationships with extended family then I came back to it and I said comma <laughs> or right. how do you handle now, extended because I know your situation yeah so and I did it today um <clears throat> I mean uh so th- with when it comes to extended family the ones I see most because they're here close are Rebecca's family. So her, her parents and, uh, her brother. So I see them a lot. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> get along fine with the, bro- I get along fine with all of them, even though we are very, very different. So we, and they know that I'm different. I'm not like them. I'm not like her parents. Right. They know, they know, I mean, <laughs> they know, um, just take a look at me. Um, <laughs> uh, and I know, uh, her mom is she considers herself one of the smart ones you know yeah she's one of the smart ones and she'll she she'll even bring that up at some point you know um i'm liberal because i'm smart you know and you're not it's almost that direct yeah. you know because it's the academia thing uh she comes you know she's she's got a couple master's degrees so therefore she's smart right. which i would always argue uh that you're educated it doesn't mean you're smart <laughs> right. right just because you have education doesn't mean shit about smarts mm-hmm. uh it means you know you have some knowledge but it's smarts or wisdom mm, i don't know about that <laughs> so i'm careful because they're also very sensitive when it comes to politics and stuff because i've heard them talk and i rarely rarely will chime in rarely unless it's funny you know, right. unless I can make a joke, even with jokes, though, even though I know they're funny, they're going to resist laughing because it doesn't fit their narrative. Sure. Um, so I just keep myself distant from any kind of political strife because some people are, are uh, hell bent to defend themselves when it comes to politics and I don't give a shit about politics. I don't care. The thing is, though, I am not, it's not permissible for me to talk about them at all. I can't joke about either side because some people uh, love government, <laughs> you know? Sure. Mm, good for you. Um, but the thing is, I found common bonds with both father and mother who are very liberal, and I am not. So mother, she's, um, she's all about horticulture, uh, uh, what's that? What's her one of her degrees is is uh, uh, uh something uh, uh horticulture restoration or something like that. Um, and she's a like a novice bird watcher too. Um, but she will um come across as if she knows everything about birds. And you know when she's wrong, I do not correct her. Because I've been watching birds since I was 10 years old. Right. Uh, but I will always make sure that when she teaches me something new about a plant or a bird, I'm very interested. Yes. Even if I knew it already. Right. <laughs> you know, even if I knew it already, I'm very interested. I want her to feel very com- – and she is. She's very comfortable around me because that's our thing. Sure. You know, that's all we talk about. Maybe dogs, but it's, you know, it's living things. It's uh, plants, animals, birds those kind of things we could chit chat forever and then every once in a while unknowingly or unwittingly uh, like if i was there he might bring something up about politics and i'll be quick to change the subject <laughs> because i want to jump into that too uh with her dad you know we talk about I, i'm not a sports guy but he is yeah but i'll talk about like old boxers Sure. You know, that kind of thing, because he was a big fan. of. He's always been a boxing fan. So I could talk about that. I could talk to him about motorcycles, about cycling. Uh, there's not a lot much more that I could talk to him about, because he is into it big time. I mean, he's, 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 he's dug himself deep into, like, the rat, Rachel Maddow's of the world and everything, oh, and no. everything they say is the truth. Um, and every once in a while he'll, he'll bust that stuff out and, and I'll just say something pithy and try to change the subject, you know, uh, (laughs) because he's so freaking, I mean, you know, I I wish he was as right as, as he was, uh, about his, uh, 
his um, commentary as he was passionate about yeah, it. Right. <laughs> He's dead freaking wrong, man. Oh, man. Uh, but so, yeah, um, that's my middle ground with them. Because so those are the only extended family members that I might have some issues with. Right. You know, if I am 100% freaking Pat Mac, get you some, you know, waving my freaking American flag and stuff because it's an American flag. Yeah. They're liberal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And American flag is an American flag is apparently racist at this point. Right. Apparently, yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What are your thoughts on the impact of technology on family interactions? Um, so my thoughts on the impact of technology of family. Number one, I wrote it does not affect me because I don't let it affect me. Right. You know, technology. Um, and I think there was another one in here somewhere. That I, oh no 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 no, it's I, it, it was in this one I wrote down I wrote two part two part answer. Now when I'm out and about, I I think it's um it's absolutely detrimental to you know family cohesion family design when people go out you know because people go out for dinner it's it's an event yeah. you know when a family goes out to dinner they don't do that every night, right. but most of the time now when I see families out they're all on devices, and it breaks my freaking heart it disgusts me number one then it breaks my heart for the kids. Yeah. It disgusts me about the parents because parents will have a like a five and a seven year old, and you could see dad walking with two tablets. Mm -hmm. He's got two tablets, so he could prop them down on the table and turn them on while the family eats. And you know that mom and dad are going to be on their cell phones too. I just it's so um, it's demented to me. Yeah. It's it's demented and it pisses me off. But it's none of my business. It's not my business. But then again, I can't say it is my business because that kid isn't going to develop the right way. So he's going to have probably some kind of negative impact on me because he doesn't have a positive impact on the mm -hmm. rest of the world right. because he's freaking brain dead. Um, but here's another one, too, because I, I know a lot of people that this has happened to. So let me see the question again. So impact of technology on family interactions. So, um, Man, how many freaking couples have been in either fights or gotten divorces because of what their spouse is viewing on the interwebs? And I don't mean like porn. I mean like flirting with somebody. Sure. You know, and it's harmless. I know people. I, they're, I've heard their wives tell Rebecca. And they're like in dire straits because she or he was spying on the other cell phone and saw text messages or mm -hmm. like IG messages or whatever it is. And it's extremely flirtatious to the point of almost um, sexting, you know, with, yeah. with a stranger, um, which I think is just absolutely freaking idiotic and, and so immature and weak. Mm -hmm. And then the other one that I know a lot of people, I'm like, and people have admitted it to me where they've rekindled a relationship mm -hmm. on texting with an old flame, like on Facebook. Oh, so-and-so I went to high school with her and we went out three times and she's friend requesting me now. And, and they start, you know, flirting that way. Um, and it's, it's, um, it's, it's freaking, uh, it's poisonous. It's toxic. I know guys too, who have been, who have been become smitten with bots, bro, by bots, by the fake girls. <laughs> yeah. You know, I know That's them. funny. Matter of fact, you know them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, and their world falls apart and they don't understand why. Mm. You know that's an interesting point. Uh, you know, I, I I loosely keep my eye on what's developing. You know, an AI world and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And and the like. You know, the some of it is really really powerful and fun to right. to interact with. But you can see how easily someone who's lonely or insecure or whatever the thing may be, you know, how they could cultivate just digitally on a screen that sort of relationship right. let alone when it gets embodied in some sort of animatronic or you know right physical yeah. thing that's has some semblance of skin and looks you know because we see what they did with the rubber rubber dolls right <laughs> yes. years, you know what i mean when these right. things start actually looking more and more human and will interact with you like when mm -hmm. i interact with something like chat gpt 
it's I'm at a place now where I'm starting to say please. <laughs> Oh, right. Because it answers in human right. form. It answers me in right. human form. It'll say, yep. hey, good luck with what you're doing. Good luck with this this and this project. If you need any more help, just come back. I'd be more than happy to answer something about this. You say thank you. Yeah, and I say thank you. And it's like, you bet. <laughs> you betcha. <laughs> Go get him, tiger. That's, that's right. So, I mean, I, I can see how that could easily, um, that could easily develop, no mm-hmm. doubt. All right. Um, number six, how, how do you go about setting boundaries with family members? Yeah, I, 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 I struggle with this one a little bit, but then again, it, it, it's, it, it's kind of right in front of me. Num- number one, this is, um, and this goes along with some other questions too, but um, I, I love this saying, you know, givers have to have boundaries because yeah. takers don't. Yeah, right. So, um, so you, you, I think one, like, some of us are nice to a fault you know what i mean and that happens in a family a lot too and then you get taken advantage of you know when it happens in a fi- family dynamic it's usually the mother you know uh because i know a lot of mothers who are burdened with doing freaking everything because mm-hmm. she's a giver yeah she doesn't have boundaries yep. and the takers yeah they don't have any that's for nope. damn sure mm-hmm. um Another one is we must, you know, so there are four of us living here and we're all basically adults. Um, We've got to respect one another's privacy. You know, when it comes to, I think that's, that's a part. Yeah. Setting boundaries with family members. Um, So we all have our, you know, uh, like our spaces, our little sanctuaries within the confines of the castle. Right. And I respect, I respect, those and the kids respect them too because they see that yeah. i'm never gonna freaking barge in the room even if i have to go in and get something from one of the rooms that are out there i usually text them in advance <laughs> which they're, they're like whatever they don't right. care sure but they but they need to see that you know that i give a shit yeah like hey you know you didn't leave anything freaking weird out did you because i need to go <laughs> in your room because you have this thing that you borrowed from me and i need it now right right <laughs> Uh, but I'm also, uh, I don't have to set up uh, a lot of boundaries. Uh, I think because, um, my kids aren't glommers, you know, mm. they're not very needy. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, that was, that's an easy one. I, uh, um, I, I, I hate it for those who have to like set boundaries. Uh, but I just don't, I just don't really know. So mine was kind of a simplistic answer based on my family dynamic. And for those who don't have it like that, I got no advice for you. (laughs) Well, I think we can say this. If you did have problematic family members, Mm -hmm. you would have no problem setting boundaries. Correct. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. So I think that's, that's really the, I think the important point here is um, however you go about setting boundaries, the individual mm-hmm. who might be listening, you've got to set boundaries. Because the example you used earlier about, especially with wives, mothers kind of thing, mm-hmm. they often have a very hospitable, very servant-oriented, giving, mm-hmm. put others yep. first kind of mentality. They can mm-hmm. exhaust themselves. And of course, especially if you've got a husband and three boys or something, you know. Right, right. They're going to tax the heart and soul. So if yep. in, that, in that case, and maybe speaking to a husband right now, mm-hmm. if you're doing that to your wife and allowing your kids to do that to their mother, mm-hmm. you need to protect that cute little garden who lays beside you every night um, right. and help her with setting those boundaries, even if you have to step in and, and address kids and whatever, because... Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I'll be the first to tell you, women are have a have a strength that blows my mind. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. they they really, really do, and we can think they're sometimes indestructible, <laughs> right? Know? And that they can do all of this multitasking and and what have what have you. But it, that's no, um, it eventually will show itself. It eventually will appear, and not just in ex- exhaustion, but they come to that realization that, you know they're being taken advantage, taken advantage of. And right. if it gets to, you hear, often hear a woman say, when, when it gets to that place, the limit, mm-hmm. you can't, you can't get the lion back in the cage. 
You know what I mean? You're not right. gonna, you're not gonna get they're they're done. When a woman is done, she is done. <coughs> yep. Right. And so how many guys do you know of when they when their wives or girls finally left them, they fell a peat fell apart like a cheap suitcase. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Right. And yeah. then they wanted to, to turn on themselves. Yeah, then they wanted to turn on all the charm and the flowers and the this and mm-hmm. that, yep. right? Like they, yeah, they did. they have to wait until rock bottom happens, yep. Yep, but it it, it took that much. So mm-hmm. if you're hearing this and maybe you're already on that path but it has not reached that point, be thankful that you're listening right now because right. this is another day at a, for another opportunity to turn your life around. Yep. Absolutely 100%. Yep. All right. What's your advice for new parents navigating the challenges of raising a family? Besides, don't use devices. Yeah, right, right. Um, You know, I just had uh, a talk on that in that school that I was just in, in Nebraska, because one of the guys is fixing to be a new, they're going to be new parents. And um, we're like, oh, great, blah, 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 you know, and, and he said, he asked the group, there was only four of us there, four others, uh, if we had any advice. Mm. And uh, I was quick to chime in. My advice is basically, be wary of advice. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> fucking got some. <laughs> Everybody's got some. And as far as, and I told him, and he loved this. I said, as far as being a parent goes, it's as hard as you want to make it. Yep. I've done, I've done single parenting, man. You know, people say, oh, it's the hardest job in the world being a single mom. And ha, bro, that was a cakewalk for me. Mm-hmm. I loved it, man. It was party time. Yeah. <laughs> me and my uh, my daughter, we we lived on our own for a, a long freaking time, man. Mm-hmm. Long time. Um, yep. And it's as hard as you freaking want That's to make That's true. So when it comes to adv- everybody wants to give advice, you know, uh, have fun. You don't need an instruction manual. We've been doing this for what 180,000 years or something like that, yeah, you know. Right. <laughs> We've been doing this a long freaking time. Yeah. Uh, I remember when um my previous marriage my ex would tell me, you know, be- before we had our first that we she wanted to go to a uh a parenting class. And I said, "What for?" She goes, "We don't know what we're doing." I said, "We're oh, human beings." <laughs> we know what we're doing. It's engraved in our hard drives, man. We don't need an instruction manual. I, I thought that was absolute freaking nonsense. You know, we need to go to parenting class. Dude, if you do that, you, you, it's probably too much internet, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, I mean, you're, you're, you're devolving rapidly. I think parents in the future are probably going to need classes and instruction manuals because – <clears throat> they're devolving because their heads are in, you know, 45 degree syndrome and they're just looking at screens. Yeah. They're not being human. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and I realize that not everybody who necessarily will hear this knows who I am. So I'll say at the outset, um, you know, I raised three kids. The two oldest are in their mid thirties and my youngest is 25. Um, so when I, just to say, when I offer some commentary, it's not ill-informed. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah but, you've been uh, doing that almost exclusively on your own. Yeah, right. So, yeah. so, so the but the one thing is, I, I'll tell my kids. My kids are great. You've met two of them. Yep. Um, yep. Awesome. One one partied at your house all night and had to stay the yeah. night. <laughs> <laughs> I had to tell them. I said, "Hey, one more drink, you're staying." <laughs> so I, said, I left. No, I, I, said, nope. I, I left You're my safe. yeah. I left my second son at Max House because they were partying yeah. too hard on Christmas. <laughs> yep. Um, but anyway, uh, I told them though, even though I was a very hands-on father, never missed a birthday, never missed a holiday, never missed a recital, never missed a never missed a basketball practice, never missed a baseball game. Nothing. I have missed nothing in their lives because I worked at home. Mm-hmm. However. Um, I told them, I said, after raising these two German shepherds, I wish I could go back and do it again. Yeah. Right? So I was telling Lizzie about that, and she says, well, what would you do differently? I said, the number one thing I would would have done differently is I would not have had a home office. Well, she Hmm. said, where are you going to do your work? I said, wherever they are. 
whoever there. And the reason being is because what the dogs taught me is the importance of a structure, which women know, you know, they understand yep. that, you know, this time for bedtime, this time for this, this time for that. Right. So the mm-hmm. structure and governance. But the one thing I learned about which which dogs and kids share in common is they're both basically dualistic, soul and body. They're driven by desire, will. You know, kids don't kids don't learn how to lie. It's just built in. Mm-hmm. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. You know, did you touch that? And they're two years old. No. Right. Where'd you learn that? Right. You know, right. So so the, so, yeah. so the sin is built in, right? Mm-hmm. And yep. so, but what it what I also learned about the similarities is that they're all. Um, they're all impulse oriented. They're response oriented, and they're going to react to situation and environments based on how if they're fearful, if they're insecure, if they're this or they're that. So the the one thing about being with the dogs all the time taught me is how much I can be involved with helping these animals interpret stimulation, interpret circumstances, people, the meaning of certain things, etc. So to mm-hmm. be there more than certain bad habits or bad reaction or bad behavior is less likely to develop. So just to be around more your kids, not just to tell them don't touch the hot stove, but to help them understand what to be fearful of or should not be fearful of or, you mm-hmm. know, all of that sort of thing. Now, typically, that's what a stay-at-home mom would do, but mm-hmm. obviously – you know, we they need also that male perspective, you know, which is going to look yep. at it much, much differently. So it's a balance. It's very different. It's oh, very different. Oh, and it's it's I'm so glad that it's there. Yeah, absolutely. That, that balance, that dynamic, because Rebecca, the way she talks to uh, the kids is completely different than the way I do. Yeah, completely. And yep, I can I, see I can't cover that same ground. I can go back to mothers throughout the 20th century from the early 1900s to the 1990s. And for the most part, there is a clear line of succession, of, of consistency. There, mm-hmm. In other words, each generation, the women were still hands-on, mm-hmm. very hands-on. Men, the development has not been so good. Yeah. <laughs> we're, you know, we're still more concerned about our man caves, our whatever, our job. You know, we... There's guys who work in a cubicle all day for for eight hours, and they come home, and mom says they need leave that alone, right? You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. and they they know because after an hour and a half, you'll be able to finally talk to dad. So he's got to have his beer and sit down and watch whatever the hell he watches. But then I'll yep. see another guy who swings a sledgehammer for twelve hours outside all day. He comes home, he's ready to take the kids bowling. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I mean. Yeah. So it, you know, so so there's it really does. It's like you said before a little while ago. You said um, it's as hard as you want to make it. Yep. And I think, especially with guys, we can be really, really good at making things very, very difficult because we can always say, oh, "It was a, it was a war out there today." Yeah. It was a, it was a real battle out there today. Yep. Instead of just saying, "No, no, 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 I'm good, man." I'm happy. Yeah. I'm not stressed right. or tired. Be- I might be tired physically if I was doing something physical, but I'm not drained or most because I'm not that invested in bullshit all right. day. I'm going to carry my own atmosphere. Everybody else might be cold, but I'm warm. Everybody else right. might be hot, but I'm cool. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yep. <laughs> so good. <laughs> <laughs> that part was free, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, man. That was good. That was good. Um, Okay, so how do you keep the spark alive? Keep Mac, I, sh- I don't forgive me for for, <laughs> for not writing that properly. Right. How, yep. do how do you keep the blaze alive, alive yep. Yep. in a long term right. marriage? Yeah, it's funny long term marriage, but we all want a long term marriage, right? But yeah. the longer it goes, a lot of people think that you know the flame fizzles. Yeah, I mean, I haven't been. So my relationship right now with Rebecca is 10 year, 10 year, 10 year mark, um, married seven of those. Uh, but the thing is, I mean, we're still dating, man. We're still, we're still newlyweds. There's a, you know what? Too many, too many couples after they get married, they 
ugh, they settle. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They're like, I'm good now. I got it locked in. I don't have to. Uh, <laughs> I don't have to exercise. I don't have to be ambitious. Right. Um, I don't have to look my best. You know those kind of things. Mm-hmm. And the wife does the same thing. She's gonna follow suit. Yeah. It's a it's a shame when it's the opposite. You know, because I know couples where the wife takes care of herself. She's freaking forty five, got kids, and she's hot. You know, mm-hmm. and the dude is like, nah, screw it. <laughs> You know, <laughs> right. but I know their flame isn't alive. You know what I'm saying? Mm, right. Their blaze, the blaze, blaze. isn't alive. So, um, you, one of the things, and and I, I, I didn't, know, I talked about this uh, uh, on uh, the um, the live a couple weeks ago. Um, I I don't know the, if this is common throughout, and I asked the women in the squad to either verify or deny. But uh, women, some women, I'm not going to say all, like surprises. You know. Sure. Good surprises. Right. I'm not talking, you know, you have a a locked in by the week calendar date night. Sure. You know, be spontaneous about it. Be yeah. spontaneous. That's a surprise. You know, I'm not talking you get her flowers on Valentine's Day. <laughs> you know, get her flowers when you walk past some flowers. Right. Um, and really freaking appreciate what you have. I do. I really much appreciate what I have. So I try, um, you know, like the birthday thing. I'm doing something this week. And Rebecca didn't. She, we were just going to go out to dinner and party at the pub. But instead, I said, hey, this is what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. 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 We're do, doing a quick overnight. It's a quick overnight. Or how easy is that? You know, a quick overnight or somewhere just to get out of the house. Sure. You're not going on vacation, but you could go a town over and go to an Airbnb and visit a restaurant you've never been to. Yeah. Get freaking snockered and go back to the a- Airbnb and party a little bit. Yeah. Your bride with your husband, whatever it is. Right. You know, um, I locked up there. No, uh, another one is, um, you know. Rebecca and I do a lot of stuff together, uh, but I'm, I'm conscious of her space. I want her to give her privacy and space because I know women need that. Guys need that too. Our own space, you yeah. know, our own time. Um, and I really respect when Rebecca wants time or, you know, she wants like retail therapy. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, hell yeah. Go, or if she wants to go uh, on a weekend and visit one of her girlfriends, do it, bro. I yeah, got this absolutely. shit. I got this. Everything's absolutely. good. Go, go. Party your ass off. Um, and you know that I have that saying. Every night is Saturday night, but every morning is uh, Monday morning. Right. Um, so Rebecca and I try to go out just to get out of the house for a couple hours. Yeah. It, it, several times a week. Several times a week. And I know not every parent has that kind of flexibility or every couple has that kind of flexibility but um a lot of them do and they don't take advantage of it because i know if i'm here if i'm right here we're just going to slip into the mundane and probably get into some kind of routine you know but if we go out we chew the fat with people visit our pub peeps and those kind of things and rebecca and i chat like school school girls another i think this one's real important i sort of mentioned it you know keep the spark alive and uh, long-term marriage is, um, man, look your best, you know, yeah. work out, eat healthy, do some manscaping groom, <laughs> you know, don't look like shit, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll look at dudes, you know, with their wives and the wife looks good. And the, and the husband has a, a, like a six day neared, you know, <laughs> right. you know, just mm-hmm. this massive neck beard and his hair is disheveled and, and he's got freaking nostril hairs flaring out everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's like, and I want to say, Bro, take a go home and take an hour and freaking cut all this shit, man. Right. Right. I I, I, I am um I am very um kind of conscious. I, I mean I'm not vain, but I'm not not vain. Sure. And I I, I don't want to be gross around Rebecca. No. Because she never is. <laughs> right. You know? Uh so I, I I'm I'm very careful about that. So but there's a couple things without like uh being too explicit. You know what yeah. I'm saying? No, I got I you. don't want to be explicit because this could be a family show. Because there's <laughs> other things too, but. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, and it helps in my case that I smell sweet when I sweat, so. <laughs> All right. <laughs> wow, that's freaking awesome. I'm never a turnoff, man. Yeah. At least that's what I, what, if, you don't, if you don't believe me, just ask me. 
Right. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. What are some of the most common misunderstandings you think couples have about marriage? You know, this is one I've heard this forever, forever, and I've overheard it more than somebody telling me. And I'm looking because I'm, I'm, you know, in the same room, and there's a newlywed couple, and there's a, a, a couple that's been married 20 years or whatever, and another one. And I've heard this so many times, where they're telling the um, the newlywed couple or the to be mm-hmm. wed couple, there's going to be fights, lots of them. There's going to be fights. Have you you've heard people say? That. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yep, that's absolutely. their advice. Hey, there's going to be fights. So think about like conflict resolution, you know, because there's going to be fights. Freaking bullshit. <laughs> there's going to mm-hmm. be fights. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so 10 years we've been together. We've n- never had a fight. We've had a couple um, disagreements. And if anyone was at fault of um, like uh, putting their foot in, in their mouth, it was definitely me. Yeah. You know, because I was close a couple times. Of, yes. you know, putting putting my foot right in my mouth. I gave Rebecca a preemptive apology when we first started dating. <laughs> <laughs> I says I am so done because I had the worst relationship before. I'm so done with with jibber jabber and fights and and uh, tit for tats and crap like that. I'm so done with that. I can I I have no tolerance for it. I don't want any part of it. I says, if it ever happens to us, it's probably going to be my fault. So let me just periodically apologize to you. <laughs> time. And you're not even going to know why. Right. <laughs> I just want to put like that, you know, I just put it in the bank, that apology. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm so sorry. She'll say, what for? Ah, uh, you know. Mm. So, <laughs> I, might, I might put my foot in my mouth this next week. <laughs> say something <laughs> stupid. <laughs> if I do, just give me a just give me a second chance and let me explain and give me time <laughs> to apologize before it like masticizes and and becomes like uh, malignant or something. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's funny. Talking I about- think that's such freaking bullshit. You know, there's going to yeah. be fights. You see, um, and it, it, because fights never get thoroughly resolved there's always going to be resentment sure. attached to a fight you know some kind of feelings harbored you yeah. know bad feelings that you can pull out and weaponize at a later time yeah. well remember this i don't want to be one of those guys no. i don't want to be a remember this you know or i don't want it to happen to me yeah you know that yeah um uh and the you know, mis- misunderstandings that you think couples have about marriage, uh, that men and women have certain and separate obligations or responsibilities. Yeah. I think that's another one. You know, uh, women are the homemakers, you know, primarily their, their main chores are laundry and cooking, that kind of shit, yeah. you know, and men go to work or whatever the fuck. I, I, I just, I think that's freaking horseshit, you know, yeah. um, I mean, definitely the yard is mine, but the garden is collective. Yeah. You know, we put, do that both together. And then as far as like chores in the house, there's nobody's got it. No, nobody has a specific responsibility. I think that's freaking horseshit too. Yeah. And it's, I think you, uh, what you're hitting on here is really important because what we don't think about oftentimes is what we can do contextually to undermine the potential for conflict. Because oftentimes the quote unquote nagging wife, (laughs) it comes out of this fact that you do take her for granted. You're not taking care of this. You're not, you know, that sort of stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And because, again, women tend to be again, this is a general statement, broad brush. I get it. There are exceptions to the rule. But where most people live, women tend to be the ones more driven to serve or to offer something or to do whatever. Mm -hmm. And you don't find men oftentimes Mm -hmm. coming home and the first thing out of his mouth is, hi, honey, good to be home. What can I do? Right. You know what I mean? Because she might have been with kids all day. What's for dinner? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. What's for dinner? Yeah. What can I do? What can I do? How can can I I help? Because because what happens is you don't do anything and then you see her Finally, after she gets the kids bathed and to bed, and she changes into the nighty, a, a real nighty, not mm-hmm. Victoria's Secret nighty, but just a nighty nighty, but that's enough for your dumbass. And she comes walking by, heading up to the room to maybe watch a little TV or something. Now you're all aroused. 
Right. But, you know, you missed the last three to four hours of foreplay. Yeah, right. Because you had to get your beer, wait on your dinner, didn't help clean up, didn't do anything, but Mm -hmm. watched Monday Night Football. Yep. And now you expect that. See, those are the things that are the context that create, you know, that conflict down the road. Yeah, uh, the one other thing when you said, you know, come home, Hi, honey, how was your day? What can I do? Uh, in a lot of cases, that that giver, giver, giver of a wife or husband, whatever it is, is going to say, no, I'm good. Yeah. And you're going to say, okay, fine. Um, yeah. no. A lot of times, you don't have to ask. Yeah. Go in, go in, you're tired. Look to see if the trash needs to be taken out. Yeah. Look to see if the freaking dishes, dishwasher needs to be unloaded. Look to see if something needs to be swept up. Yeah. Just go into action. And you're not looking for attaboy. It's your fucking job, man. <laughs> no, in fact, in fact, you're right. That's the better way to do it. So, like, when dinner's done, you say, honey, we got this. Right. Got it. That's it. We're not going to ask right. you because, you, like you said, if you ask, right. they're going to say, no, it's mm-hmm. okay. Right. You're, you're exactly right. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Can you discuss the importance of communication in a marriage and maybe offer some tips? <sighs> Besides sexting. I know I've been cussing on this. Is this okay if I cuss <laughs> yeah. every once in a while? Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. It's the University of Badass 3 or that's right. live stream either way. <laughs> well, my first my first sentence was never miss an opportunity to shut the fuck up. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, that that was the best advice given to me a long time ago, too. But I I take it to heart now, you know? Um, importance of communication. Um, so being a, an observer <laughs> i've observed couples like talking communicating and it's typically the husband she's talking and he's in the easy chair and he's going like this uh-huh yeah oh yeah uh-huh yep mm-hmm. you know that kind of thing yeah. dude man you need to be attentive yep. you know all of your attention uh it doesn't matter if it's boring or if it's about her girlfriend Mm-hmm. If she needs to talk to you about that, you got to be there, bro. Right. You might think it's boring, but it could be very important to her. Not only that, but, and then when, even if like Rebecca usually rarely um, bothers me with anything trivial, but if it is like a story about school or what, what have you, I am always kind of cognizant about I'm looking for, and it usually just happens now. It's kind of a, it's a way of life for me. Asking a follow-up question, you know, be involved with that chunk of communication, be involved because, you know, communication is followed by authenticate, authentication, communicate, authenticate, communicate, authenticate. You know, you don't want it to be one way. Uh, Let me see what else I got here for follow-up groups. Yeah. And then express, uh, you know, interest, but another big one too, because men and women are different um, and we're both. We both find ourselves out of sorts at times. Yes. You know, out of, that's what I call it. Uh, Women, of course, have uh, different reasons than men, you know, to be out of sorts. Um, But I think it's important to realize that, to be mindful of it. Yeah. To understand when you go, oh, shit, you know, that, that didn't come out the way it usually comes out. You know, I could hear some undertones of aggravation or frustration. Right. Um, I'm real careful not to say, well, what's wrong? What, you know, what's wrong? I'm going to freaking listen and be compassionate, you know? Yes. Uh, that's a tough one for, for men to do. Yes. But I, I, I've learned that because I, because I just dig Rebecca so much and I don't want to freaking, sure. I don't want to, um, I don't want to be abrasive or even come off as abrasive or un- uncaring. Mm-mm. So those are a couple of my policies right there. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, discuss. Yeah, good. The importance of communication. It's very important. But I think there's some couples who have nothing to say to one another. You know, no Dude, common that's a, interest. That's a true. That's so true. I mean, I, 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 I know, I know couples like that. I've been in their company and there's no way they could have a conversation with one another. You know where I, I think I learned the bulk of my listening was not in good circumstances, previous life, previous sure. marriage, um, <clears throat> where I was threatened nonstop by her 
and it was very visceral. It was very shrill. It was uh, just very ugly. And I talked about carrying the digital voice recorder right. with me. And it was full disclosure. Anytime mm -hmm. we had a freaking a discussion, which they always turned ugly, I'd pull that digital tape recorder out and set it right in open view. Right. Um, and that told me, don't put your foot in your mouth. You're recording yourself, yep. not just her. You're recording yourself. Um, so, And that, that went on for a long, long time where I had that. And that taught me that valuable lesson too was I was so glad that I had that so I didn't put my freaking foot in my mouth, you know. And <laughs> it right. really helped me process, you know, and think about my um, uh, rebuttal or my retort or whatever it was that I was going to say prior to saying it. Dude, it really was a, a piece of wisdom. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure you are grateful that, <laughs> that yep. you did that, man, because that could mm -hmm. the whole thing could have turned out completely differently. Yep. Yep. I mean, I did it as a uh, it was, um, you know, about self-preservation because yeah. she had threatened me with a fall down the stairs and uh -huh. said that she was going to call the cops on me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, holy crap. And And they just got uglier and uglier conversations, you know. There was death threats and just poison threats, all kind of threats, you name it. Right. And because product, she was delusional, product of the mental health system, prescription meds, big pharma, yay, all that. Hmm. So it was my little safety well, net. You know how to pick them, Mac. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So, so you're saying she's available. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Sorry. Yep. <laughs> how do you hand how do you handle disagreements or conflicts in your marriage? Since um you know, it's funny because I'm gonna try because Dan said he totally disagrees about the fights. There's gonna be fights, but not drag there's not drag knock down, drag out, but arguments. I that was my point. Arguments. I don't have arguments either. Yeah. Whatever. Couples say old couples will say there's gonna be arguments. I've used the wrong word. Sorry, Dan. There's going to be arguments, lots of them. Arguments. I haven't had an art. We've had some minor disagreements, but man, we are pretty. We're 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 in sync pretty well. So, handle disagreements or conflicts in your marriage. Number one, you know the best way to get out of a bad situation is don't get there in the first place. <laughs> um, so I try not to get there. You know, yeah. let me see. Handle disagreements or conflicts. Um, if Re Rebecca isn't needy. She doesn't ask a lot of me, but when she asks something of me, I do it immediately. Yeah. I want her. She, she needs to know that I respect the hell out of her because I do, but I still want her to know that without telling her that, Yeah, you know, it, 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 I want it to show in my actions. I respect you. Um, the other way, to handle disagreements or conflicts. Like I said, don't get there in the first place. You got to pick your freaking battles, man. I mean, there's some things that um, it's minor. I, I say that Rebecca's like Mary Poppins, practically perfect in every way. Right. But there's a couple things she does that um, I disagree with. And I go, I don't freaking care, man. I'm not going to say a word. See, check this out. Anecdote. I had a guy in this class I just took we were talking about relationships and he thought this was a great idea. Um, he said, yeah, my wife has a habit of forgetting stuff. And, uh, like, uh, twice last month, she forgot to turn off the burners on the range. So I take her pictures of them and then text her the pictures like, mm -hmm. Hey, guess what you did again? There's no way in a million years I would ever do that. Mm -mm. No, turn it off. <laughs> 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 I mean, if it's a recurring theme that happens every single day, you know, something needs to be said, yeah, of course, sure. but, but to send a picture, cause that's like gloating. You yeah. want something to happen. You're yeah. picking a fight. Yeah. So there's stuff that I, you know, that, that, uh, I'll look at and, uh, and I'll go, hell no, that ain't worth it. I'll, I'll pay to get that repaired down the road. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? There, sure. There's no way. I'm going to uh, go down that road and and nickel and dimer about some freaking menial bullshit that it's really not catastrophic or won't be catastrophic. No, it's not that bad. 
you know, uh, cause at the end of the day, man, I freaking pee into purified water. That's in a polished porcelain bowl. <laughs> That's right. We got it good, man. You got you know? it really good, man. Yep. Really good. Um, well, one thing I, I will say, because I, I think people can often miss your tenor about things. Mm -hmm. And what I hope people catch is there's, I've said on one of my videos like the other day, it was a, it's an old one, but I posted the clip. But at the end, I said, we need to add some density to your intensity. Yeah. That's what you do. Mm. In other words, to you, the small things are the big things. Right. In the yes. sense that, in other words, you're, yeah, for a little instance like that where somebody else just says, oh, I'm going to send a picture of how, why she, you know, that she did this and I'm going to, you mm -hmm. know, dip, whatever. Mm -hmm. To you, it's not just I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. Right. Mm -mm. You know what right. I mean? And why? Because you see that small thing as a big thing. And like I've always said to people over the years, about it's it, it's, it's a Bible verse that says it's the little foxes that spoil the vines. It's the mm. little, it's the death by a thousand cuts. Marriages don't right. end because primarily because of adultery or abuse. Those are rare. The majority of marriages fail. Now, not just because they fell out of love either. It's mm. death by a thousand cuts. It's a thousand yep. neglects. It's a thousand ill-spoken words. It's all of these things. For you, especially because of the situation you came out of with your ex, mm -hmm. your your vision is doubly <laughs> increased. Right. And these things are really, really big issues. You do not want to repeat the past. So there's a, a lot of density in your intensity to everything. And mm -hmm. that's, to me, um, that's it. It's so it's not having to memorize all the different things you would do in this situation because you, there's not enough <laughs> – you can't hold all that capacity. You, there's, life is going to hit you from every which way but loose. So mm -hmm. long as you yep. have that basic premise is to say, no, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure I communicate to the person I love the most the following. Yep. And life is going to give me a million instances unexpectedly in which I can practice that. <laughs> yep. Yep. You know, it, to, to kind of like to your point there and something I just thought about now and I've been I've been better at it like the past like year maybe two years, um, is uh, in, introspection. So and what I mean by that is, uh, everything's good, my relationship's good, for the most part, it's good, uh, but I get consumed in day to day activities and work and projects, and because and mostly because everything's good. You know, so I don't have a lot of stress and stuff like that. But I need to think every once in a while. I go, oh, shit, man. I haven't done anything for Rebecca in a while. Mm -hmm. You know? Right. I haven't done anything for, I mean, we do stuff together. But I haven't, like, you know, expressed my thanks and gratitude for the person and the caregiver that she is to me and my kids. Um, and I need to do something, you know, something bigger than my copy and paste lifestyle, whatever, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and that's a tough one for dudes because it's an ego thing too. You know, we're good. Freaking King, you know, King of the Hill, man. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't need to do anything special, <laughs> <laughs> but I do the spontaneous stuff, you know, this little, so that's why I do that too. Well, one of the reasons I do that is because she mentioned it. It was like a year and a half ago. She was out of sorts and she said, I want to be surprised. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh shit and that's all she said and i was like damn it man i am on my ass <laughs> you know i felt like real guilt right, right. then. like whew, i need to step up my game because i don't get counseled by her that often that was one of the few times i ever got <laughs> counseled by her and that's all it was mm. but it, it man it 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 uh that stuck with me <laughs> yeah so you know I don't know. So that introspection now is um, it, it's been good. It's been it's been a better thing. I'm glad she did that. I want to be. I'm not. Yeah. I want to be surprised. Yeah. No. I I agree wholeheartedly, man. Mm -hmm. And again, if if that person is your focus, that's certain you're gonna you're gonna find and seize the opportunities to do that. But it goes back to what you said before. Things don't have to be what everybody says. They right. just don't have to be, you know. You yep. can always be the outlier. There's always that possibility, so long as you don't 
begin with <clears throat> impossibility. Mm -hmm. All right. What do you what role do you believe compromise plays then in a successful marriage? You know, that's massive, right? <clears throat> I think I mean it so with with a lot of relationships, let's say, you know, it doesn't matter if they're married or not. Um, if you're like good friends with somebody, you're you're going to compromise with them when it comes to choices of things. Um, and if you're friends with your uh, spouse, then it, it, I think it's it's easier. So it's pretty easy for me. One of the things we already talked about as far as compromise is because it might be sp spontaneous. She might say, hey, I'm going to visit my friend uh, the weekend after next. And it would be like, oh, shit. You know, weekend after next. Right on. Good. Let me freaking uh, crisscross some things out here. I had this thing going. Uh, but no problem. Yeah, good, good, good. I, we're good. Um, but I'm real... Uh, uh, I'm able to shift gears like that real quick and make yeah, those sure. adjustments because I want to respect that, um, that me time, you know, cause I'm going to need me time too. Right. Uh, cause I get a couple times a year, I go on little hiatuses out in the wilderness and stuff like that. And, uh, and I need that stuff, man. I need that. So if she needs that, cause that, and that's a compromise, wait, you're not going to be here to coddle me, to take care of <laughs> me, right. to make the bed in the morning. You know, um, the other one is, you know, there's like compromise on a day to day. Um, cause I think a lot of couples, they might not say something like, Hey, if they, let's, let's say they watch TV every night. What do you want to watch tonight? That it could be yeah. as simple as that. What yeah. do you want to watch? Yeah. Um, because Rebecca and I watch a little bit of stupid TV every night. Sure. And she always asks me, but the thing is a lot of times I could read that she's in the mood for something. So I will say, I don't care what it is. As mm -hmm. long as you're having a good time, I'm going to have a good time watching it. Even though I want to watch Seinfeld <laughs> or whatever it is, you know, yeah. man, I'll just say, I don't care what it is, man. Mm -hmm. Cause I like the stuff that you like. So I'm good with it. And it could mm -hmm. be like compromise with, you know, your favorite restaurant as simple as that, <laughs> yeah. you know, or, uh, uh, who's driving. Yeah. Those kind of things. Sure. Um, so I think that's, it's very important because if there's not, it means one of you is like the power broker, you know, one of you is like the inch. I, I, I don't want to think that one of us is, uh, uh, you know, uh, the commander, you know, right, sure. that we we're both steering the ship. You know, yeah. we both have freaking equal roles in, in steering this freaking ship. Um, uh, so yeah, man, very, very important. Very awesome. Yeah. Cause you can't always have it your way. Yeah. The same freaking Burger King. This is not Burger King. Right. Um, I'm going to, oh, well, I'm going to switch the questions here. Put mm -hmm. 13 after 14. Um, yep. Do you believe in marriage counseling? Mm. And if so, when do you think couples should consider it? So I, I only because I've been in my mm. previous marriage, um, I believe in it because it helped me out and it helped me out because there was a lot of disclosure there. That's right. <laughs> now, and when do you think couples should consider it? Not, I think some couples go as like maintenance, you know, mm -hmm. they just sure. say, Hey, let's go to marriage. I don't think that's necessarily a good idea because you could uncover something that didn't need to be uncovered. Right. You know, you could start, I, I think it only needs to be if there's turmoil, yeah. but it has to be agreed upon. Like I'm the one, I'm the one who suggested in my previous relationship, marriage counseling. It was my idea. I found her mm -hmm. and she agreed because she was right. <laughs> Did you ever see um, Old School? Yes. When Will Ferrell and his wife go to the marriage counselor. Oh, my God. Yeah, I barely <laughs> remember. It's been a minute. Man. And he starts talking about the um, the uh, the waitress and wondering what panties she was wearing. And yes. <laughs> so he was being open and they're just freaking out. Yeah. He's like, well, I thought this yep. was. I thought we were going to be open here. Right. Yeah. 
way too much. So, you know, back to that, I think that uh, if, only if there's turmoil, you need to you need to go to marriage counseling because you don't want to uncover this, you know, your your thoughts about looking at the waitress in her panties or whatever it is. <laughs> um, and then, you know, one of the things I've said before, I mean, I joke about it, but I'm serious at the same time, man. If I were a freaking marriage counselor, a couple were in strife, I'd lock the door and have them freaking smoke a joint. <laughs> <laughs> and watch them laugh their asses off. Yeah, right. Like, what? What? What are we fighting about? Ah, screw it. Let's go get some Fritos. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, one of the things that was wise in some of the churches that I went to back in the day is they would have a um, premarital, like, you went to a marriage workshop type thing. Mm -hmm. yep. They wouldn't marry you unless you went through this. Oh, know, sure. Yeah. Type thing. Well, good. So they probably covered a bunch of stuff like this yeah. prior to. Yeah, oh, of course, yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, how Top important my... how important is financial planning and budgeting in a marriage? Because and this is what people may not realize is so many marriage conflict and or divorce has to do with the financial in if there's illness in the family, a family is drawn together. If there's financial problems, a family can be torn apart. So how important then is financial planning? And yeah, that's that's like my first line. Is that your point right there? Okay. I said finances can be one of the most stressful parts of a relationship. Finances. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. 100%. And the thing is, you know, um, I know I know couples who they don't make a lot of money. They're happy as hell. They just manage it differently. You know, they sure. manage it. They manage it. And I know because I've talked to uh, like couples who are like paycheck to paycheck people. Yeah. And they budget and they, you know, penny pinch on everything. And, um, uh, but they're happy as hell. Um, uh, because they're no, they know they're doing the best they can, yes. you know, and, uh, and they're not frivolous with it because a lot of times what happens too is one or the other. Cause once again, me and my previous one, dude, she was spending faster than I could freaking make it. Mm. <laughs> And a, and a lot of this I, I didn't even know until after divorce when I had to right. uh, assume her debt. <laughs> it was like, oh, my God. Yikes. This is massive. But uh, so I think that the sooner we become debt-free, that's a big one, too. Mm -hmm. Man, yeah, debt-free yeah. is so good. When, you know, when you clean up all your, your debts. I mean, I'm talking – I'm not talking about your mortgage, but credit card debt, um, mm -hmm. uh, paying for school you know, getting cars paid off, you know, having fewer and fewer loans out there, right? you know, having fewer of that crap. The sooner that happens, um, uh, and the, the sooner you become debt free and have some savings and you're able to manage your finances, your stress levels go down, your happiness rises, all yeah. that stuff, because I've lived that I've lived that you know, because when, after I got divorced, Oh my God, my debt was <laughs> like, it was, it was, it was Mangasso. It was Hugh Angus. <laughs> it was ginormous. Um, and man, I worked hard. It took me uh, every bit of uh, seven years. I, I had a two year plan. Mm -hmm. It took seven and a half, something like that, to go. But I worked hard on it, you know. And once that burden was lifted, I was so much freaking uh, happy. Uh, and then, you know, like high dollar purchases, they have to be like amiable and agreed upon. Sure. Because some couples don't do that, you know, uh, like dude will go out and buy a, you know, another $1,500 gun and come home and say, hey, by the way, and the wife's going, hey, what what was his charge here? <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is this? Oh, yeah, about that. See, <laughs> yeah. I always clear. I mean, <clears throat> we do it with one another. We always, if we don't want a lot of stuff, we're not like material people. We don't sure. have a lot of things. We don't have gadgets in the house, you know, and gizmos and, and dish sets and, you know, fancy this. We, don't, right, we sure. don't care. Um, but um, if there's if there's charges, and I would say, shit, like $35, we're clearing the hot with one another. Mm. You know, if I'm doing you do Amazon purchase and lots of yeah. lots of I know that she's gonna clear me hot for thirty five dollars, but I'm still gonna be courteous and say, Hey, by the way, Rebecca, there's this thing, um I'm I'm and I'm gonna tell her, I'm not gonna ask. And I'll ask if it's a high dollar, you know. Mm -hmm. 
say, you think it's okay if I get this thing, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. because man, that can be very, very, that could add so much stress to a relationship. And then when you have stress with a relationship, everything else suffers, you know, your love life suffers big time too, you know, yeah. any kind of stress. So, uh, and because you don't want that to suffer because that, that could be one of the best bonding experiences that a couple has there. So you don't want that to suffer. Yeah. Very good. All right. Shifting to friendships. Um, what qualities do you value most in your friendships? And remember I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, I used, I, I thought about, cause I only have, I'm only close to a couple people. Yeah. You know, like friends. There's only mm-hmm. a few. One is it's got to be effortless. Yeah. Dude. I mean, it's got to be effortless. Um, and it's got to be reciprocal. And what I mean, not just in, um, like, a lot of people might think, well, anything laborious, you know, reciprocal. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm talking about trust has to be reciprocal and, like, conversation, discourse. Yeah. You know, all those things. So those are those those jumped out at me. I, I don't have much more to elaborate, but I would put those way high up there. You know, effortless. I don't want to have to freaking work. Yeah. I, you know, I don't I don't. And then and then the same uh, on the other end, you don't want to have to work. It's just it's reciprocal, Bo. It's give and take, you yeah. know. Well, you know, it's, it's kind of funny how. um <clears throat> Our friendship yeah. kind of mirrors your and Rebecca's thing. Yep. Mm-hmm. There's no. Yep. No, really. I. I. Think we've I never. Put that down. We've never argued. We've never. Right. Disagreed. Yep. We've never. Anything. Dude, and we do business together. And we do business together. That's that's supposed yeah. to be I've, hellish. Yes, I've had dudes tell me that didn't know us but knew me say, um, "You don't have anything in writing." I said, "No." He said, "Dude, you need to get a fucking lawyer." I said. I, trust me, I don't need one. He goes, bro, I've been in business with. I said, dude, we both have vested interest, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it works like traffic. I mean, we can go yeah. past each other at sixty miles an hour in ten thousand pound vehicles because right. we don't want to hit our cars. <laughs> right, right. Yes. Yeah. Said, no. Yeah. He, he just didn't get it. I never think about it. Uh, no, I, and you're I, yeah. Yeah, I was telling somebody, I don't know how long ago, we were talking about something very similar to this. And I said, yeah, I said, I can point to things on my person and say, pull out this knife. Oh, Matt gave this to me. Right, right. Pull out this flashlight. Matt, we'll see that hanging on the wall. Matt and Rebecca gave that to me. Yep. You know, and, and, and see that right there? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. It says right Matt, the, the Matt can point on his wall and see the things. Yep. And, and nobody, these were things that were just, it wasn't on Valentine's Day. No, man. Spontaneous, bro. It was just spontaneous. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's – and I don't know – obviously, that comes down to individuals. It comes down to age. comes down to all yep. sorts of things. Who's got the time for right. nonsense? You know, that's nope. what always weirds me out, dude. I don't think we've talked about this before. But when I see people posting – and you may not see it as much on Instagrams, but you do see this somewhat on Facebook – but people posting about the drama that they have with other people in their lives. Mm-hmm. And I'm always puzzled at why people like that have that much access to you. You know what I mean? Right. And then and then to post it as well. Yeah. It you know is you got an issue, bro. <laughs> <You're posting. laughs> exactly, you know. I can't imagine, you know. Like we have some something you know, and, and me posting, yeah, man, CJ really pissed me off the other day. <laughs> he did this thing. And I'm going to post this online, you know, like yes. post it online. That's yeah, he right. did this thing and he called me a name. And uh, I mean, it really, 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 really hurt my feelings. <laughs> really, really very much. This is so uh, obviously hypothetical. I'm getting over it. I'm getting over it. I just need some time. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> uh, uh, Jesus. So yes, effortless. That's a big one. That's yeah. what I mean. Effortless. Effortless. Yet at the same time, it takes time. Yep. You know what I mean for yep. for people to get to know each other. But well, again, I think that's another question in here. It's coming up, and I think okay. I elaborate on that. All right. One. So let's go to the next one. Yep. How do you differentiate between a casual acquaintance and a true friend? Oh, it's. I think it's this one. Hold on. Let me see. Uh, so casual acquaintance and true friend. Let me see. Uh, how do you 
So, you know, a lot of people would say <clears throat> the, um, the cliche answer, somebody you could trust your life with, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. I think it's so cliche yeah. uh, because that was the first thing that came to mind only because it's so cliche. Right. So, you know, how do you differentiate between a, a casual acquaintance and a true friend? A true friend's going to save your life and put his life in harm's way and you would do the same for him. Dude, I would do that for anybody. <laughs> that <laughs> You're I, Batman. You know? Yeah, I'm sure. Part of the deal. Um, yep. Uh, so you genuinely, genuinely enjoy their company, com uh, the, enjoy their company and genuinely trust them, you know? Yeah. Someone you could confide in and know that they won't blow smoke up your ass. Oof. See, I only have a couple people like that. Mm -hmm. Th that right there, I, there's very few that I have that I could say that. You know, I genuinely enjoy their company, company genuinely trust them. Uh, uh, and then I know that there's only a few people that I would say stuff to or ask advice uh, and they're going to be honest with me, brutally honest. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you know, uh, and and because they're not going to blow sunshine up my ass. Mm -hmm. You know, you're like that. Rebecca's like that. I've got very few other people I could say that about. Yeah. So that right there was my number one for that question. So, well, you know, there's a there's an interesting dynamic that you experience as the small C celebrity. Yep. That is contrasted mm -hmm. with the big C celebrity mm -hmm. because they have the lines of demarcation have to be clear because they're a big C celebrity. They're protecting yep. themselves from paparazzi, right? Right. But in your case, there aren't bodyguards. There aren't avoiding public places and that sort of thing. So people are kind of in your grill, whether it's online or offline. So does it, mm -hmm. um, does it weird you out <laughs> that mm. there's people who are like, I just, like I saw one, one day somebody said, I just want to have a beer with him and just, and not say a word, just listen I almost wrote. He'd you know be, what? He would, wouldn't hear a lot. He wouldn't hear a lot. He would be bored. He would give you five minutes and realize you got nothing to say. I would. I would so enjoy my my silence and sipping on that beer, because <laughs> I'm probably not going to initiate a conversation except for, "Hey, how you doing? Where are you from? What do you do?" Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me everything. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. It it it's better just to to say, "Hey, I would love to have a beer with him. I'd love to yep. whatever and just and just talk." Be interesting. Chew yeah, chew yep. the fat. Just be a dude, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. Um, but but anyway, but so in other words, when we say, I say all this to say, when we say casual acquaintance, it's a little bit different because a lot of people who may be casual acquaint acquaintances in your life are going to say, oh, yeah, Max, my friend. Max, my mm -hmm. buddy. Yep. And I guess right. you are in the Facebook sense of the term, <laughs> right? Yep. Right. I mean, yeah, they're friends. They're acquaintances. They're whatever you want to say that it is. Mm -hmm. But true friends, it should be for anybody. It should be very, very few. Yep. Just by the nature yeah, of the Yeah, I, I could definition. think of very few people that I would go, because I don't like go to dinner parties. I think of very few people that I could eat dinner with and not be uncomfortable. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I you know feel like I mean? it's a date. Like going to their house or vice versa, yeah. you know? Yeah. And not be uh, like, well, shit, I guess I got to drive the conversation or I don't know. I got I to gotta do something here. <laughs> yeah. All right. How do you approach conflict resolution then in friendships? <clears throat> well, it, so it, it's this is this is this is not this is kind of like almost like a two parter because it's different for for guys and gals, and it's different also for uh, if you're married. You know, if this is your spouse you're talking about, right. you know, when you right. talk about friendships, um, because if it's with dudes, it's different. It's just direct. Yeah, it's very direct with dudes. I mean, if you got something to say, say it, bro. Yeah. I'm like, dude, don't don't fucking do that. What are you stupid? <laughs> <laughs> that is the you know? gay, gayest thing I've and ever then, seen. Then the other guy's gonna go, What do you think this this is stupid? Yeah, it's stupid. Think about what you're doing. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. It is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> that's you know? usually how it goes. I've been in so many of those. Yeah, I've been yeah. in so many of those. Yeah. You know, uh, uh I mean, you can't do that. Not everybody can do that, unless I'm joking with Rebecca. I mean, because she's done that to me. Yeah. She'll go, my name's Patrick. <laughs> you know, when I do something stupid. <laughs> 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 I 
Um, so, you know, her approach oh, on that, good. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm freaking, I'm an idiot. God dang it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, you know, you got to, you got to, you got to gauge the depth of somebody's skin, yeah. you know, when it comes to conflict resolution. Uh, but in friendships, if it's true friendship, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be any work. It should be once again, effortless. Yeah. But like with marriages, um, take a deep breath and a pregnant pause before mm. you say anything. You know, yeah. process it and see yourself saying it. You know, remember I talked about a long time ago, you know, if you had, uh, imagine your, everything you say during the day is being recorded and you have to listen to it at the end of the day. Yeah. So I, I did that for a long time. I purposely recorded it and then I would do a playback and go, shit, now I'm haunted a second time. <laughs> <by this stuff. laughs> um, um, let me see where uh, yeah and and no conflict will be resolved if there's anger present All right you know if there's right. true anger so you got to think before you you're speaking you got to think of an approach you know you got to plan your route during this approach uh when you've got an issue yeah but yeah so it's different you know with between dudes gals and guys and then gals mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. gals gals don't Com do a uh, conflict resolution the same way dudes do mm -mm. how many i've had good friends when i was younger that it was a fist fight yeah. and then it was immediate reconciliation yeah. immediate after blood yeah how many people became how many dudes became friends but started in a conflict oh yeah yeah right a lot a lot i've got i've I, I had one uh when i was in my early 20s in the military um dude i, I deserved it uh punched me right in the freaking face <laughs> i mean it was hard i did i yeah i was stupid i was drinking did something stupid uh and man i went down i got back up and i was like eh, i don't i think that's the end of this one i don't need to take it any further. <laughs> right oh shit <laughs> yep yeah, I mean, because he was right. He was. I knew it immediately that he was right. Yeah. But we became buds after that. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it's, it's yep. so often happens that way. Yep. Can you talk about a friendship that has significantly impacted your life for the better? <clears throat> yeah. So mine with Rebecca and mine with you. There's two right there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, I had to. I, I said impacted your life for the better. Yeah. So one of the things both of you do, you're both mind nourishing you know so i'm not just uh uh you know i, I don't feel like i'm getting hypoxic <laughs> you know <laughs> because some people bore the shit out of me sure you know even if i like them um i realized man i could contribute to this and i'm going to contribute to whatever is going on right now uh but i'm bored but i want to be courteous yeah and contribute to this discourse yeah uh so yeah those are two right there i could say wes also yeah. you know yeah. uh because i i just feel better I, i'm a better person when i hang out with any one of you three there's very few others there's a few others i could say that about too yeah. but i just figure you know people know us and uh uh they know rebecca they know you they a lot of people know wes um yeah. so there's a few right there but yeah so both both nourishing and then the other thing is I, like with you i don't know rebecca could get oh, i love it because she could get so freaking adolescent but you know <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't know i don't have any other friends that are you know 14 years old so <laughs> uh, damn right man boobs. damn right yeah, and, and 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 at the risk of sounding bromantic, um, right? Same thing here, man. It's just when you, when you think of it's well, it's, it's been a long time since a relationship has impacted my life for the better, because right. much like yourself, I spent most of my life giving more than receiving. Giving. Yep. You know yep. what I mean? Giving, giving, giving. Yep. Um, so offering advice, offering this, offering that, and, and <laughs> there was some reciprocity, but not. It was never equal in any capacity. So, yeah, because I can look at now at, at how much I live my life differently mm -hmm. since we became friends. You know, and yep. so to me, that's a, a telltale sign of that influence. So, yeah, I, I, I love I, also hanging out with uh, Farmer Joey. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the more I hang out with him, the more I like him. 
Yeah. Because uh, I know him better than, you know, like people on squad who've met him. They, they have no idea who the right. real person is. But uh, and he's very private about it. But he's been opening up more, you know, just showing me who he is. And once again, he's chill. It's effortless and it's yeah. reciprocal. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I can yeah, see so, that in him. I can see yep. that. Yeah. <clears throat> it goes both ways. All right. Do you believe this one is quick? Do you believe in the idea of a friendship break, much like a relationship break? What does that say? Hold on. I can't see. Hold on. It says nope. That's for chicks. That's all I have to say on that one. <laughs> that's it. I am not going to go any further with that one. <laughs> what did Dime say? Chicks. Chicks do that. Semi gayity. Yep. Yep. Semi gayity. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Um, how do you make new friends as an adult, especially outside of work or school environments? Yeah, see, now, I, I thought a lot about this because initially I said, shit, I don't want any freaking friends. But right. I remember uh, instances in my life, and some of them were, 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 some of them were just because, um, you know, nice to a fault. Yeah. Plus, small c, I have to be extra... You know, if they're like, if, if I get fanned on or duded, um, I've got to be, you know, extra. I'm always courteous, though, and friendly to in, most anybody I meet. But I want to make sure that uh, that I'm paying attention to it, that I'm, you know, friendly to folks like that. But um, <clears throat> y- you got to take that shit slow <laughs> yeah. because you know what could happen. This has happened to me in the past. It's been, been a long time, but uh, because you could become smitten, you know a, how a dude could become smitten with a chick, right? Sure. Smitten. You're taken immediately. You could have the same thing happen with some dude. You know, yeah. you develop some man crush. This guy's so freaking cool. <laughs> I want to have a beer. And then you say, Hey, let's mm. freaking, you know, have a beer together. Um, and, it, 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 and I've done that even like at the pub, for instance, you know, you meet somebody and then you invite them to your table. It's like, oh man, this guy's cool as shit. And then you realize 10 minutes later, I made a big mistake. <laughs> I made a big, big mistake. Yeah. And this has happened to me in the past couple of years, several times, Yeah, you know, extending uh, my, not generosity, but just fretting like a, uh, uh, like an olive branch or whatever it is just yeah. to somebody and saying, Hey, have a freaking beer with me or, you know, or yeah, I can help you with that. <laughs> And then you realize, oh, shit, man, this is not good. And it's happened uh, where I've extended, like, my generosity a little mm-hmm. too soon. And now I had now it was vested. And I had to link up with this person again and then a, with a follow-up. Yeah. Uh, and it's it was like, damn it, man. Uh, because some people are, like, immediately uh, charismatic yeah. and um, – it's it's easy to commit and say, hey, let's freaking get a pint. And then you realize they, they suck <laughs> because they've got quirks. Like they eat their peas one at a time or their Snickers right. bars with a knife and a fork. A <laughs> knife and a fork I saw the other night. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what, 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 because, you, you know, you can't you can't judge a book by its cover. But sure. a lot of times, because I, I, I've told this to people and I mean it as a real compliment, <clears throat> um, but I'm, I'm careful when I say it now. Because there was a couple times I said it like immediately and then I was wrong. But some people have instant likability. Sure. sure. I am not one of those people. You're not <laughs> one of those people. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, instant likability no, where, uh-uh. yep. Um, um, but as soon as they get to know you, they're like, oh shit, this is freaking awesome. But like some people just have it. instant likability. So you got to pull the reins back on yourself when yeah. you see that. That instant likability, that's meeting a, a gal, a guy, it doesn't matter who it is. Some people just have that. That's yeah. like that, that, that charismatic uh, appearance and uh, delivery. Yeah. Uh, and then you realize, wow, they are so flawed. <laughs> They're <laughs> so freaking mm-hmm. maybe thin skin or yeah. uh, boring. You right. know, I was wrong as the Shallow. day is long. Yeah. yeah. I, I always made it a goal. To, I'm going to wear 100% wool and irritate everybody because I felt like I was supposed to be that sort of person in the world. You know what I mean? To yeah. bring about change I, with the intent of not just irritating people for the sake of ir- irritating, but to kind of, you know, help shake them up a little bit and realize that there's a lot more that they could be doing with their lives. So that was that, you know, that was that drive. 
But from a first encounter, that's not necessarily well received. So, right. You know. But anyway, mm-hmm. all right. So mm-hmm. that's marriage, family, that fun, friendships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good ground to cover. Um, yep. I, I, you know, it's, I got to think of diverse things for us to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right chat about that was yeah. great man that was great yeah. i opened this up and i went i went and you know deep on uh like think put putting a little bit some some of them i couldn't i just had no like recollection or anecdotals or uh it just didn't involve me at all in, in any way so like <laughs> friendship breaks <laughs> <laughs> friendship breaks. but i know like chicks have those you know sure friendship sure like, yep. yeah yeah Yep. Rebecca's right. Adam with her best friends. Yep. 